going on, everybody? Try for here, and thanks for checking out this shitty video. Just kidding. Maybe I wasn't. Oh yeah, look at her. That's a good way to sleep right there. She has to teach me about that air mattress she's uh, sleeping on. It's nice. Anyways, in this video, I'm going to be showing you guys how to craft legendary weapons. This is actually pretty useful and really simple once you, you know, got the skill. Before I get into this, though, I just want to let you guys know. I am doing a giveaway on this channel, and it's going to be ending in three weeks. The winner will get to choose from three different consoles, out of a Nintendo Switch, Xbox One, or a PS4. All you have to do to participate in this giveaway to have a chance at winning is simply leave a like on the video to show some support. That's basically your guys' thank you to me. Subscribe if you haven't and click that bell to stay notified with my uploads. And lastly, comment something down below that you've been curious about to know how to do or what you are enjoying about Save the K2. Anyways, let's jump into this. Really, really simple, guys. I'm telling y'all. All you have to do is first off, have a character that has metalwork. Some of you guys might be wondering, well, how do you get metalwork as a skill? You're gonna have to max out your craftsmanship, and then you'll have two different choices. Choose metalwork, because that's the only way you're gonna be able to build this forge to be able to craft these legendary weapons. And by the way guys, a little tip in case you're wondering how do you level up your craftsmanship. There's textbooks out there which you can find at libraries for the most part. You can also find them just randomly about. And also like this place right here that I'm at, the castle base in Drucker County. Well, it's technically a drive-in theater, but there's a castle fortress around it. I actually made a thorough video breaking down this base of what all you can actually do. I'll leave a link down below in the description if you guys want to check that out later or something. Anyways, for now, I'll just give you guys a little pointer about this place. You can actually watch training videos, and this will level up all skills on your character. That's how I have, like, all my characters maxed out, because of this drive-in theater. People are wondering, well, why don't I spend 3,500 influence to get that bigger base? This is the reason. It just upgrades my characters extremely fast, and goodness gracious, my character's in poor condition. I'm sorry, that's probably annoying some of you guys. And also another little way, of course, is you could just build a workshop in your base and do the features that are available in your workshop to level up your craftsmanship. So yeah, that's a few pointers on how you can get the metalwork skill. Now, let's go ahead and build the forge, which as you can see, it's right here. The description for it reads, metalworking skills unlock fearsome weapons and the ability to convert materials to parts with great efficiency. You'll see this actually does require parts, but I'll get more into that once this is actually built. It's going to require 10 materials and two cases of chemicals with four survivors working on the project. 32 minutes. Goodness. Okay, so once you have waited the 32 minutes and your forge has been built, you can now craft legendary weapons. And this will level up your craftsmanship, so if you don't have that completely upgraded, this is a way to get it upgraded. But yeah, pretty sick. I'm gonna get this. Just cuz. I'm gonna go ahead and create all of them, actually. Just to show you. I have tons of parts. <laughs> I mean, as you guys can see. Okay, and here's the other options you get. Convert materials to parts. And convert parts to materials but you need knowledge and construction so you're gonna have to have two survivors that took the opposite paths such as for instance one of them is gonna have to take metalworks and the other one's gonna have to take construction to be able to do this once again to unlock those you're gonna have to max out your craftsmanship all right now let's see do i got them in my inventory nope they are in my supply locker right, so i got them now i'm gonna go ahead and show you guys the stats so you know what you're spending parts on for as you can see, this weighs five pounds, and look at those stats. Impact is kind of low, max durability, a little below average. Dismember is great. Lethalities, a little above, a little below average. Quietness is good, speed is excellent, and ease of use is good as well. Up next, I mean, you guys can see the stats. I'm not going to sit there and go over all of them, because I know if I do that, I'm just going to bore some of you guys to death. But yeah, this is what the transmission mace looks like for the stats. If you see down below in the description, it says it's nearly impossible to break, so yeah, pretty cool. Here's the mower blade sword you can craft. The stats look freaking sweet. Goodness gracious, that's speed and dismember. Golly, that's nice. Next we got the rebar. The rebar blade is obviously way better than this regular rebar. And it's a few more parts to create the uh, rebar blade. And also we got crow's beak. Has an interesting name. It's a little hard to swing, but it's fine-tuned for maximum skull puncturing. Huh, 
that's great but yeah i just wanted to show you guys this real quick on how to create these weapons because these are great weapons maybe you can create these to give to your survivors or something that have as melee weapons around your base or maybe you just want some of these for yourself i mean heck they're not bad weapons at all i have to say it's pretty awesome that the forge gives you the option to create legendary weapons like this but um yeah i guess that's about wrapping up this video everybody hopefully you found it enjoyable i'm out of here though thanks for taking the time to watch and listen peace